Okay. Well, last week, the FDA took a controversial step in approving a new Alzheimer's drug. In fact, uh, I think two panel members quit over it. It was that controversial. The advisory panel had voted against it. So what does that mean for you or your loved ones with Alzheimer's? Dr. Gotham Desai talks to us live about that new drug and uh, what that uh, controversy means. Dr. Desai. Yes, good morning. It's very confusing for patients and their families. Um, you know, it's very heartbreaking to speak to the caregivers of those that have Alzheimer's because there has not been any medication approved that can slow the progress of the disease. We can only treat the symptoms. And here you have the FDA approving it and the advisory panel voting against that approval. So it's really caused a lot of confusion for the 6 million plus Alzheimer's patients that we have in the United States. Are there safety concerns for this drug or what was the controversy regarding whether or not it should be approved? Yeah, so what, how this drug works is by it removes amyloid plaques, which are a certain kind of protein in the brain. And the FDA said, hey, well, that sounds promising for slowing the progress of the disease. But the advisory panel said, well, you know, the studies didn't really show any halt in their progress of the disease uniformly. And then you had about one in three patients who had some serious side effects like brain swelling. Oh, wow. Uh, and Mark was mentioning during the commercial break to me that, uh, you know, one guy said last week that, you know, it was, it was pretty remarkable, his, his recovery from the, with using this drug, but it's very expensive. Does that play into this at all? Yeah, so it's not even available yet, but in a few months when it does come out, it'll probably be around... $56,000 a year forever. So if you have insurance, you know, you might be looking at an $11,000 copay, not to mention the MRIs and PET scans and other tests that you would need, uh, you know, to continue on it. And if you think about the long-term implication for taxpayers, um, if people are on Medicare, and they're going to be receiving this at the government's expense. That is a lot of money for how many people, do we know how many people right now are struggling with uh, Alzheimer's in America? Yeah, it's about six million or more. Six you know, million. Million, six million that have it. So even if a small fraction of those, you know, receive this treatment, it's gonna cost a lot of money for everyone. And that's why the stock went up so much last week for the maker. And so it, this, drug, this was a, considered a treatment, right? Not necessarily a cure for Alzheimer's, correct? Correct. It's not a cure in any way. Is there any chance or is there research being done that is promising in the way of a cure for Alzheimer's? Well, that's what they're looking at now. So they're looking at longer term studies with more patients and more minority patients because minorities are more likely to get Alzheimer's, but this was primarily tested on non-minority patients. Mm -hmm. So they are looking at other drugs like this that remove that amyloid, but so far they haven't shown you know, anything for a cure, and that's just what's so frustrating for patients and uh, their families. Yeah, I mean, it's a devastating illness. What is next for this drug? Does it, where does it go from here? Well, next it'll remain to be seen, you know, once they ramp up manufacturing, whether insurance will pay for it or require pre-approval or, you know, not pay for it, because right now it's only indicated for patients that have mild cognitive impairment and have early Alzheimer's, so it's not been tested in advanced cases, and you might need to rule out other causes of mild cognitive impairment besides Alzheimer's. Sure. All right, Dr. Desai, thank you. It's uh, such an important issue. Anyone who's had family members with Alzheimer's knows it's devastating. So very For sure. Hard. Thank you. Thank you.